So, last time, I said that we'd be having a Catwoman crossover as next part of the uh, Night Quest the Crusade storyline. I was mistaken, because before Catwoman finds out that there's some other guy in the cowl, it's time for Renee Montoya to find that out in Detective Comics number 670, which is written by Chuck Dixon with pencils by Barry Kitson, inks by Scott Hanna, colors by Adrian Roy, lettering by John Costanza, and... Uh, with editing by Darren Vincenzo and Scott Peterson. It's Christmas in Gotham, and as Bat can't help but be super broody. We see a couple get their parcels stolen from them, and as Bat doesn't inter intervene, he just looks on. The first, the forced joy of the season merely darkens his mood. The city is still a maelstrom of violence, deceit. All the tinsel and garland in the world cannot hide that. The season does not change the city's true nature. Still, some shoppers run the gauntlet to indulge in the decorations and the ersatz cheer. More than foolish. But it is only petty crime. It is unpleasant, and he dislikes it. But it's not worth him worth exposing himself to the light. The couple will return to their home in one of Gotham's bedroom communities. Bah! Humbug! But seriously, this opening does a really good job really solid job of in a single page differentiating how the Gotham street crime called open, no pun intended, differs between Bruce and John Paul. With Bruce, he'd have intervened and clobbered the muggers and given us an action scene to kick off the story. He probably would have still grumbled about Christmas not being a cheery time of year for him and all of that because parents are dead. But as bad as truly full humbug, not even inter not interfering because nobody's life has been threatened, so as far as he's concerned, he doesn't care because he doesn't like Christmas, and this'll this'll teach him the true meaning of Christmas. At GCPD, Bullock and Montoya get a Christmas present of their own in the form of a giant pile of cold cases. However, they are drawn away from that from a different kind of cold case. A dead body off of Diamond Pier, encased in ice. As Bullock checks in, he learns that there's a lead in one of the Black Gate escapees, so he goes to check on that while Montoya is left to keep an eye on the ice. Elsewhere, Asbat uh, comes across a drug deal gone bad and leaps in to interfere. At the morgue, the body thaws out and then gets up and walks off, all while Montoya was away getting coffee. So when she returns and sees the ice casket empty, she is legitimately concerned, possibly wondering if this is in fact a crossover with um, Dark Horse's thing from Another World comics. Then, when Montoya goes to alert the M.E., Colleen, someone shuts off the lights. As they investigate, Montoya fires a shot at what she thinks is the former corpse, which alerts Asbat. As Montoya explains to Colleen, she thinks she knows who it is. Asbat comes in and surprises Montoya and Colleen, which causes the M.E. to faint. The two put Colleen somewhere safe and go looking for their target, who Montoya believes is Victor Freeze. When Freeze bat last fought Batman, Bruce was wearing the suit, so the two are unfamiliar with each other. Particularly since, well, Asbat hasn't been reading the files on the Bat computer, because investigating and doing, you know, due diligence is, is stupid. Asbat quickly takes Freeze down, but has to be stopped from killing him by Montoya. With Freeze out of action, Asbat bails, leaving Montoya alone with the unconscious supervillain. This issue is short, being a normal length issue, and to the point, but I think it's still pretty necessary. It's useful to spread the information that this is that not only is this not the old Batman in terms of tactics, um, but also in terms of the person in the suit to new people. Uh, in this case, Rene Montoya. Further, it's also an instance of John Paul's lack of knowledge and unwillingness to engage with the resources at his disposal, like Bruce's files on the bad computer, potentially biting him in the butt. From a larger scope position, this is also important, as this is the reintroduction of Victor Freeze after being off the board for five years, in particular since at this point the character had been reintroduced and revitalized through Batman the Animated Series, which also makes for a nice touch by the other major character being focused on here, being Rene Montoya, because, well, Montoya is a character who is created for Batman the Animated Series. In fact, the first, and at this point, almost only character from Batman the Animated Series to be introduced into the comics, because Harley Quinn has not been introduced yet. 
I had considered saving this for later in the run or just skipping it entirely for the video recaps. I've done a Brit recap, and I think it's important that I did cover this um, it, because of those facts, because we're expanding the number of characters here. And also, for as much as John Paul Valley is like not going to stay Batman, obviously not going to stay Batman. And to a certain degree, there are going to be some repercussions in terms of the character of John Paul going forward and the stuff from Bane. It is useful knowing that this chunk in the middle with John Paul in the cowl had some meaning to an extent in the comics. Um, it's not just a case of a bunch of stuff that got forgotten later. Like this is the point in time where we're bringing back Victor Freeze and we're while we haven't rewritten his backstory yet, we are taking the, the stance of Victor Freeze is a meaningful character. We're going to have him active and available to use because we're going to do stuff with him because of what Batman the Animated Series has done. One other little thing, uh, this issue's cover marks it as part of the search, but the subject matter fits this much more totally into the crusade, which is why I have slotted it in there. The search subtitle consistently tends is used with the exception of this and a couple of the issues of the Catwoman story that we're beginning into next month, uh, Mark's books as being part of Bruce Alfred's Hunt for Dr. Kin solving for obvious reasons considering the subtitle. But this none of this ties into that storyline at all. In fact, none of it like, connects back. In fact, this story isn't even a search. Um, Jean-Paul isn't searching for anything. This could have, like, he blundered more or less into this fight with Victor Freeze. So, odd choice there by DC, but, eh. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.